It's my great pleasure to introduce our 14th annual Feigenbaum Lecturer, Dr. Partho Sengupta of Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City. And uh, I would like to say that I'm hoping that this new presentation format would be a testimony to ACE's commitment to innovation and also highlight the vision of its founder president, Dr. Heidi Feigenbaum. If the number of publications from Scopus is an index of growth in the field, then you can clearly see an exponential trend here. Imaging like tissue Doppler, strain, displacement, velocity imaging started growing and exceeded somewhere in the years of 2003, 2004, all the other disciplines end up is in a right-handed helical and a left-handed helical geometries of the subendocardial and the subepicardial region, which we know is the myocardial fiber geometry of a heart. And here you can see the geometry of the vortex formation in early diastole has actually a toroid type appearance, just like a smoke ring is formed inside the left ventricle as it transit during the phases of cardiac cycle. All these visualization data sets has been met with a lot of enthusiasm. And here is a image that was featured on the cover page of Nature Cardiovascular Medicine for the entire year of 2012 and 2013. And here is a snapshot of the three-dimensional flow fields of the same example, where you can see the kinetic energy inside the left ventricular chamber. The data is not existing just as single case examples, but has been translated into clinical uh, research. And here are some preliminary data sets where we can see the incremental value of fluid mechanics, vortex mechanics in patients with heart failure, and also for understanding advanced <coughs> therapies like cardiac resynchronization therapy. I never imagined meeting you as a holographic avatar. Such a great pleasure to, to have you here. Uh, but tell me, are you from past, present, or the future? Uh, frankly, Partho, I feel like Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars thing, but I don't think I did, at least not yet. Recall Obi-Wan appeared as a computer-generated holographic avatar to answer important questions about the future, such as where to go, what to do, how to become a Jedi Master. How can I help you? That's great. So, Obi-Wan Jin, tell us where is AFC heading? This era will be fully realized by 2020, oh. a mere seven years from now, and that's really impressive. I agree with you, Jim. I think we all are going to experience a very profound change very soon. I agree. Partho, there's so much work to be done. I should be on my way. Uh, my new Millennium Falcon's waiting out the parking lot. <laughs> Goodbye, and may the Echo Force be with you. Bye, Jim. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the of the Australian Human Rights and Thank you. Studies that were scanned using a cheap portable technology were then subsequently uploaded on a cloud-based server by study cast and spread to the rest of the world. The study arrived in the United States and was spread over 75 institutions worldwide. <coughs> Data sets were analyzed and were submitted back within a median immediate interval of 12 hours. Once again in this particular study, we realized the structural data sets were rather easier to understand. The challenge was with the data variability with functional data sets like LV function assessment for such data mining to be done manually. One of the techniques could be to look at this data set as a matrix. And then inside the matrix, try to look for the associations that differentiate a disease pattern from a health pattern initiated. And National Science Foundation is already planning the roadmap to the cyber infrastructure of the 21st century program. For those of you who might fear that this intense rely, rely on computers 
and advanced analytics will remove you from the patients, the answer is the merger is going to be seamless. They are going to be wearable too, like the Google Glass. And we are currently trying to work with some Google Glass initiators to develop health applications. I've used some of these glasses. As I see the world wearing these glasses, I see a small window on the side on which I can see patient images, data analytics, advanced analytics. The Google Glass responds to head motion, to your verbal command. It's going to be synced to my clinical world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not fiction. This is true. Google Glasses and such wearable computers are already here. This is an example of augmented reality. So the future is really exciting, but it's going to be also very challenging and for bringing this magic alive here. Thank you so much. can say is wow. I already feel sorry for next year's uh, Feigenbaum lecture. There's no way he can top this. My goodness. Uh, uh, you, you, you've got, we're, we've just got a glimpse of the future. Parthal, you did a fantastic job. Thank you so much. You have set us at a level that tough people, uh, people are going to be very, very difficult to follow. Like I said, I feel sorry for next year's. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs>